Hello ladies and gentlemen, today I'll be reading Ed, Ed, and Eddie Lost Episode. This will be a part of a series I'm doing as I am writing the Lost Episode creepypastas list for Tadstop videos. With that being said, without further ado, let's begin. As you may know, the popular show Ed, Ed, and Eddie had been running for a rather long time. However, between October 7th, 2003 and October 21st, 2003, episode 34 was accidentally released one week before it was scheduled to. It was also known to some around the office that the primary writer had been sick and out with the flu. And instead of going on to make episode 34, the show was supposed to replay episode 1 at 5 a.m. Eastern Standard. People reported a very disturbing new episode premiering on Cartoon Network that day. Some children were unfortunate enough to see it. Apparently, the quality of the episode was mediocre when held to regular standards. Animation was choppy, sound was constricted and very muffled. Reports of a line even running up and down the screen similar to a crappy VHS tape were received. Scenery was described as overwhelmingly dark and depressing without changing up props and other background objects. Stormy in its appearance overall. Characters also seem to behave oddly. Instead of the norm normally goofy hijinks inspired personalities, viewers complained that they seemed incredibly agitated and grotesquely hurtful towards each other, and constantly beginning to sob after their lines. The protagonist also had a very bad lisp. No one knows why, but he spoke of a rather sexual tone that, again, bothered most of those viewers. I was one of them. The episode began with Eddie walking down the street of Ed. I noted that Double D happened to be missing from the scene. There was an angler shot coming from in front of the two, showing them walking towards the viewer. He, Eddie, was wearing a rather angry expression, the same one that he wears when something goes wrong. His eyes were red around the iris. Ed looked absolutely forlorn, practically being dragged behind Eddie, tears in his eyes which were both lazy looking and opposite in both directions. Kevin, in the series antagonist, was riding his bike opposite to Ed's towards them. The shot became very blurry. Low moans were heard coming from Eddie before Kevin hit him, which honestly never happened on screen, usually it just went to black. The screen then snapped back to Kevin, again heading towards Eddie. The view became so blurry at this time, all I could see was a green and red blob that headed towards a yellow one. Again, a low moan could be heard. Only this time, it sounded like the microphone was broken and a loud static came greatly, overshadowing the moans. Next, a claymation sequence of Double D sleeping in Eddie's bed came up. Honestly, it could have been the abruptness of the scene, but I jumped and shivered upon seeing it. Waking up and getting out of the bed, he slowly moved oddly around in the circular room with a fast pitter-patter of his footsteps. He was walking in a oddly unnerving and disjointed motion, only something that claymation could honestly portray. It was something like out of the ring, except claymation again. The steps were very clear. I, I was shown a bird's eye view of him scampering around the room. There were no visible doors either. Ed began screeching as loud as he could. It sounded like a fish or cat as he moved wildly around the cell of his room, faster and faster until the screen began blurring again. In the purple room's floor coloring, began swelling the now orange blur. An extreme close-up of Eddie's front door sat in absolute silence for a maddeningly long time, at least two minutes of dead silence and this door. Next, we see Jimmy and Sarah at a doctor of some sort, probably oral. Jimmy, obstructed in view by, hang by a hanging lamp, is crying loudly with Sarah trying to comfort him in an unusually warm fashion. It hurts, Sarah. <laughs> it hurts. Suddenly, the door to room was smashed open by a new character, a dentist of some sort. His face wasn't shown because he was tall enough to be out of shot. Sarah was escorted out of the room, and Jimmy was shown with his headgear mangled, bent upwards, stretching his lip very, very high in tearing proportions. The front of his gums was trickling with blood, and teeth were actually missing at this point. 
And the disturbing part wasn't the teeth. The disturbing part was he had lost both his arms and legs beforehand, apparently, and sat as a paraplegic. I, I almost cried upon seeing one of my most favorite characters come to this conclusion. The others had must be in up, had beaten him up or something. The camera stayed on his mangled face for a few more seconds as a still picture, silent as ever, leaving most of our viewers to our own thoughts and imagination. The commercials at this point came on and were as normal as normal can be. It seemed that we were either getting a breather or maybe it was a tape, I don't know, but the commercials just seemed comforting at this point. However, when we came back, we were instantly assaulted with a very hairy Ralph in his darkened shed fisting a cow repeatedly. The visual loops and starts to get blurry as the scene pans out. Next you can see Naz reading a magazine on her couch. Quality is perfect at this point. Then it cuts to Eddie. He's now alone without Ed. The quality declines and becomes worse and worse before, than before as he is still walking, the sun now lighting the mood somewhat as he smiles and begins running. The door is shown again and we see through Eddie's eyes as he reaches it and opens it. His house is nice and bright and a very badly played violin is now blaring, the only audio in the scene that permeates through his house. Eddie now opens the door to his room. Then. It cuts to Johnny. Johnny is shown under Naz's couch cushion. He crawls out on all fours in a very comedic way and pops out from behind her, still oblivious. I laughed somewhat as... as I forgot to draw his eyes, I thought. Suddenly, I stopped laughing as he starts swallowing her head, still in a cartoonish fashion, of course, but this time it was different. He, he, he and she stayed like this until she started kicking and struggling. Johnny held her like this until she went limp. Then, a zoom in on his face was revealed and showed extremely small human eyes. Double D was laying on Eddie's floor no longer in claymation. The camera showed, Eddie, showed Eddie's house for the remainder of the episode, about three minutes. Then, the next program begins on the spot. Hope you enjoyed this uh, retelling of my tale. And that was Ed, Ed, and Eddie Lost Episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one as I enjoyed reading it. it. Took a few tries, and to be honest, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this creepypasta in terms of actual story. The only issue, I guess, if you're an aspiring narrator, I would put on reading this is the actual writing. It is written literally scene by scene what happened. I had to actually ad-lib a lot of the stuff coming apart, so it felt like it flowed better. I.e., you know, I would say that, oh, commercials came on. We were instantly assaulted by a very hairy route. You know, you had to actually do a bit of ad-libbing in that part. But besides that, um, this is not really a good story for narration, but in terms of an actual story, it's probably one of my favorites and one of the best ones I've read. I know I've been saying this quite a lot, but I've been reading a lot of classics in my opinion <laughs> in my recent time. I'll try to get a shit pass out sometime. Well, this has been That Creepy Reading, and I'm signing off.